The Garden Report is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to another edition of the Garden Report after Celtics Jazz. And we did get to catch up with Got that old beat friend down here in Boston. Kelly Olenek before the beatdown. <laughs> he was upbeat this morning. Happy to be back. I know Will Hardy was happy to be back as well, the former Celtics assistant here. And uh, uh, not to cut you off, but Jason Terry. Yes. I got a chance to uh, talk to him a little bit. So check that out, clnsmedia.com, all the coverage of tonight, as well as Brad Stevens' comments from yesterday, an impromptu press conference with him, where he discussed possibilities for the trade deadline. And I think in a rare moment of honesty, said the team's need is a win. And they're going to look for that in free agency, trades, as well as within. Uh, nice showing from O'Shea Brissett tonight, who I think is probably who he's referring to in terms of in-team uh, in candidates. But you can start to get some of the names around the league, guys who fit the Grant Williams TPE of $6 million, yep. uh, guys that they could stack a bunch of contracts up for and go get. Steven seemed to indicate in his presser that that's not the way they're going to go. And he also seemed to show some confidence in the center position now. But the Celtics have been linked in multiple reports across two seasons now uh, to Jazz center Kelly Olynyk, of course, the former Celtic. And he's had in the midst of the most efficient season of his career. The last two years for him have really been good. 32 mm. on a $12 million expiring contract. And today uh, showed some interest in coming back to Boston. Here's what he had to say. Some rumors that maybe talks about going back to Boston. Did you hear any of that? You I heard about it, Danny, yeah. I mean, I've, heard, to <laughs> I've, I've heard it. Um, it's kind of like whatever happens, happens. Um, you know, if you're on Utah or Boston or wherever you are, you know, you put your best foot forward and trying to help that organization succeed and, you know, accomplish their goals. So if it happens to be in Utah, then, you know, that's where all my focus is. If it happens to be somewhere else, that's where my focus will shift to. So, normally a pretty modest guy in what, in what he says, doesn't say a ton. I think showed some interest there in a Celtics reunion, but should the Celtics have any interest? He's like, please make this happen. No, I mean, um, it's interesting because you wonder what Utah's going to look like in a month or so. No, around buyout season, if that's a possibility, if that's something that's on the table, I mean, sure. That's just, the way it works. I, I would be, yeah, I think I'd be really surprised if Celtics were to pull this off uh, via trade. Uh, considering he's an expiring contract, he's someone you'd have to re-sign. And let's face it, it's going to take uh, a few guys just to match that contract. And I don't think that's something that uh, Brad Stevens wants to do right now. And uh, for him to go out there and say, hey, a wing position guy, that's something that could be in the near future. If you're on this Celtics roster and you're a wing, like, that's your cue. <laughs> it's like, hey, there's a spot here. We still, you know, that eighth spot in the rotation, you know, the third guy, fourth guy off the bench. Uh, we're looking to cement this thing. And whether you want to consider this an audition up to this point, maybe a reminder, if you will. And I think that's ideal for the Celtics because, like Brad Stevens said, you don't want to tweak the chemistry. You don't want to, you know, uh, trade a guy or bring in a guy, as he said, right, that could just... Disrupt, And I think a lot of the time when people hear that type of phrase, they think, oh, a hothead. Oh, somebody who says, hey, how come I didn't get the ball enough? That's not always the case. It could just be someone whose game just doesn't translate the way you want it to. Or someone that, you know, needs the game to go a certain way to get him going. Whereas the team's sort of finding this, this nice clicking, you know, unit right now, even though, yeah, second unit may not be solidified, but like we've been saying the last few weeks, Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, I mean, these guys have something there, you know? And if one of these guys in Lamar Stevens or uh, O'Shea Brissett picks it up a notch and, and solidifies and convinces Joe Mazzula that he's their guy to be, you know, the ninth guy in this rotation, then that's a, that's a win. You know, I, I look across the NBA and there's, there's not a lot of teams that have that, what the Celtics have. So, like, this is an advantage. Why shake it up? It's Brissett, for sure. This is a big opportunity for him, especially when the big sit in this back-to-back -back situation. Yeah. They have two of them. And that happens so often. So I think that like, that's so unique to a Celtics team, whereas other teams across the league, that's not always the case. Guys have to wait two, three weeks to get this opportunity. This stuff is happening every other week. But they have Unless. to balance, though, obviously, are the stakes of this year. So going all in, doing everything you can to have the playoff proven bodies, yeah. uh, enough healthy bodies, and guys who could step in potentially as insurance options yeah. if there is a health 
issue in the playoffs. That would obviously be devastating depending on who it is. Well, uh, but adding a rotation yeah. level guy who can step in, they did it last year with Mike Mascala. See, I did, that that's, move was specifically if Rob went down. That's the kind of in. move I have in mind. Something yeah. like that. More of an insurance policy instead of someone like, hey, look out, we found our guy and everyone else is going to sit now. You know, I, I just don't think this team is built that way. And, and I think it would send the wrong message, to be honest with you. And it's a basic answer because he's been floated so much around them. But I do think John Conchar is the right choice. Rebuilding Grizzlies, well not rebuilding, but a struggling Grizzlies team right now that could fall out of the race in a month here if they're not able to get together around Morant. Yeah, clock's kind of ticking out for them, yeah. But regardless, right. if you get aggressive for a guy like that, he fits the TP. His game is very uh, multifaceted. He's 6'6", he's a rebounder, but he also shoots a three. He's ranked, at least last year, as one of the highest level defenders in the league, according to the analytics. So he's a guy who... Number one is used to sitting in Memphis. He doesn't play every night there. He doesn't play consistent minutes yeah. for them. Which is the kind of guy you would target. But right. he still contributes at a high level when he does. And I feel like he's the kind of guy who fits their team, too. He yeah. can defend a bunch of different positions. He can shoot that three. And he can rebound. So if O'Shea's not able to grasp that spot here, that's a guy you stick right in, I think, and know he's going to give you stuff every night. Yeah, I think those are two... Those are two options for sure. I mean, two potential options, I should say, that, that could happen. Do you I have just, a name you like? I really don't, Bobby, to be honest with you, because I, I just think it's something that if you go down the road, like, guys would be available. You know, when trades buyouts. happen, buyouts, um, the Zach Levine situation in Chicago, he's healthy again. You wonder if, he's, if that trade's still on the table. I'm not you want to Levine? No, hold on, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I'm not saying <laughs> that'd be crazy. I mean, it wouldn't be crazy, but it would be if it's something that'd be drastic, right? What I mean by that is um, other the other piece is in the deal. You know, there's going to be other parts to that People type of blockbuster People have voted a Patrick deal. Williams. Jonathan Kaminga could become available now after his uh, statements to the Athletic today about his situation going to say. So that think, would be well, interesting. Yeah, I mean, maybe OKC. Like, do they make some kind of, like, minor deal with someone is is available after Kendrick that? Kendrick Williams? Kendrick Williams. I think that's the one. That's probably the one name that's crossed my mind. So, and it's probably because it's fresh in my mind because I've seen OKC. And he's someone that could essentially just be an insurance policy. Come in here and, uh, uh, you know, keep up. Would you offer Pritchard? I feel like he's the highest value player off the bench, especially with the contract he just signed. No. I wouldn't. Just hold on to them. I wouldn't. I yeah, I hold on to them. For a couple of reasons. Um, the way he's been playing, uh, you, you gave this guy a raise. He's responded to that. I think that continues. You know, I think you want to see that through. Um, someone that can facilitate. He's shown you other things that he can do outside of three-point shooting. I think that's what you want to see that through and see what that looks like, you know, by April. It'll be interesting. We have about a month to kick that around, but Brad talked yesterday. Kelly talked this morning. Check out those interviews on CLNS Media. And we'll have coverage of Celtics Pacers on Saturday, the first of two games down there on the postgame show. For Josue Pavone, Bobby Manning, tell us who you like as trade options. Yeah, hit us up in the comments. I know you want to list them. Let us know below. And this has been The Garden Report. FanDuel is the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL.